My name is Willy Fautre. I am the director of uh, Human Rights Without Frontiers, a Brussels-based NGO that was created 30 years ago. Last year, I was twice in South Korea and I had the opportunity to investigate the illegal practice of coercive change of religion uh, of a number of people who were kidnapped, confined and pressured to recount their new religious affiliation. Over the last 20 years, thousands of people were victim of this illegal practice and their perpetrators remained unpunished. I found out that this had been and still is the practice of fundamentalist Protestant pastors and evangelists in the name of their crusade against so-called heresies. I interviewed about 15 people in Seoul who had freely chosen to leave the Presbyterian Church and to join Xinjiangji Church, a new religious movement with a different uh, theology. They had been victims of uh, those Protestant activists, but they had managed either to escape from their captivity or to fake their deconversion. What is the modus operandi of those modern age crusaders combating uh, heresies? In most cases, parents discover that the adult son or daughter still living under their roof has changed religion and has joined uh, Shinjoji church and other also other religious movements. They are then filled with uh, anxiety and uh, fear and often look around uh, for help. They can easily find so-called cult counseling centers uh, online uh, that are organized by evangelists, missionaries and uh, pastors. These activists are working to bring lost sheep back to their Presby Presbyterian church. A first meeting is then organized with family members and afterwards information sessions are organized to carry out so-called deconversion uh, program. Parents are trained to prepare the kidnapping and the confinement for several weeks of their son or their daughter. These are criminal offenses in South Korea, which can be punished by several years in prison. What is the concrete plan of action? During the first phase of the operation, parents are informed that they will have to organize the kidnapping of their son or daughter and choose a well-equipped place where no escape is possible. Afterwards, they will have to extort a signature from their son or daughter on a statement declaring that they have willingly asked for the deconversion services of a cult counseling center and that they are voluntarily joining a so-called religious deconversion program. The Christian cult counseling centers have a policy uh, to never intervene directly as long as the person to be deconverted has not signed an agreement. The reason is that the Xinjiangji Church started to sue some pastors and evangelists and they now want to avoid any prosecution. The agreement that must be signed by the kidnapped person before beginning a so-called deconversion program is also left to family members to obtain. The pastors turn a blind eye uh, to the way this is accomplished which can include blackmail, threats, physical or psychological uh, pressure, violence and detention. When the deconversion program can officially start, the work is assigned to lower ranking uh, activists specially trained for that purpose. The higher level masterminds of these operations ensure that they cannot be prosecuted. Some concrete examples. Among the victims of kidnapping and coercive deconversion attempts, I can mention the following cases that I investigated. Ji Ingu, 24 years old, was killed by her father during the deconversion program. 
Years later, he is still on the run and unpunished. Young Jong Kim, a 30-year-old pharmacist assistant, managed to have the police alerted after 50 years of confinement. Yun Kyung Kim, 23 years old, faked her deconversion after 44 days of confinement. Ye Won Son, 20 years old, spent 81 days in a psychiatric hospital. Ye Jung Lim, 21 years old, managed to escape. These examples show how fundamentalist pastors and evangelists have been treating Xinjiangji members for years in total illegality and total impunity. Now they instrumentalize a marginal incident in the coronavirus crisis involving one Xinjiangji member to push the South Korean authorities to ban a competitor. We have just published a 60-page report on the illegal practice of forced change of religion by fundamentalist Protestant pastors and evangelists. This can be found online on our website hrwf.eu. I thank you for your attention.